So imagine a game of telephone, but on steroids. There's a lot of talk about modern day mythology. In fact, I'll be talking about it later this month. But there's one key aspect of mythology that can't really be replicated in the modern day. The necessity to pass down information through oral tradition. We've got books and the internet. We've got detailed documentation of natural disasters to your first grade dance recital. We just don't need to pass down knowledge through myth. As a consequence of this, I find myself forgetting about how drastically oral tradition shapes mythology. The fact that societies would tell their stories generation to generation before ever writing them down. So how does this affect myth? Well, a few weeks ago, at the beginning of the semester, one of my professors did an exercise with my class that I think really helped me understand myths in a more complex way than I already did. Four people witness an event. In the classroom, this takes the form of four volunteers who previously watched a video and wrote down a brief description of it using vocabulary that wasn't reflective of the modern age. What the volunteers didn't know was that there were two videos. Two watched footage of the Darvaza gas crater and two watched the detonation of the Tsar bomb. The rest of the class lined up at the front of the room with the volunteers in the middle. Four people from this group would go to those volunteers and hear their stories individually. Then the volunteers would go to the back of the room and the people who heard the stories would take their place. Four more people would go and they would hear the stories. The cycle continued until everyone had heard the story. Then we did it again. After round two, the last people who have heard the myths take the place of the volunteers, and the process starts again. This can go ad infinitum, but by the third time, our class had completely different stories from one another. But the point of the exercise really wasn't to demonstrate how muddled the stories became, but to show how specific elements came through. Fire, as you can imagine, was a very common thread. As well as the color orange, there were a lot of allusions to trees and the action of rising and falling was also very common. All of these aspects were also shared by separate classes who had done the exercise in the past. No two stories were the same, but there were same elements to all the stories. There were unique differences. In the last class to do it, a blue boat crept in, and on our end, we had a sorcerer in a tower. But the most memorable elements of the true events crept through in all versions. Now we can pick holes in this exercise, starting with the fact that everyone who participates knows they are participating. But the simultaneous distortion and preservation of elements of the story gave me an insight into oral tradition that I've never gained from reading a book, and sadly, you probably won't get from me blabbering on about it. But if you ever need to convey how myths evolve, and you have a large enough group of people, this exercise is worth doing. I'll see you tomorrow, Vince. May our stories outlive us all, as distorted as those stories may get.